The girl shyly removes her shoulder strap. The middle-aged man in front of her looked at her in fascination. But the next moment, he came forward to put on the girl's clothes and held her tightly in his arms because it had promised her the best memories of the two of them as a gift for her 17th birthday. David showed her Paris in all its glitz and glamour. He spent millions of pounds on a painting just to make her smile. The girl falls in love with the sweetness of it all, but she forgets that there are no shortcuts in life. A few months ago, Jenny was a daddy's girl with excellent grades. Her parents were demanding of her. Her father even wanted to hear the sound of Jenny's sweat dripping onto her textbook from upstairs, although Jenny had become the seated player in her class to take the Oxford exam. But her father was still not satisfied with her grades. He sent Jenny to take cello lessons so that she could get extra credit for Oxford. He sent Jenny to the orchestra to show her cooperative spirit. Jenny was overwhelmed by the series of arrangements made by her father. One day, Jenny was standing on the roadside after orchestra practice, soaking wet from the rain. In the distance, a car was coming slowly. A mother and son crossing the street caught Jenny's attention. Her son was kicking in the rain and dropped a small shoe. The two of them were delayed on the road for a while, but the car behind them was waiting patiently. The driver must have been a modest and courteous man. Jenny was thinking about this, but the car pulled up right in front of her. He knew that if she was sensible, she wouldn't have taken the car of a strange man. But he was worried about her cello as a music lover, so he suggested that she put the cello in the car and follow the car. Jenny was amused by a strange request. She obeyed and put the cello in his car. But the rain was getting heavier and heavier. Jenny had to ask him if she could ride in the car with her cello. The man told her to get in the car. Jenny just got in the car with a strange man. The two of them talked back and forth and soon became acquainted. After this chance encounter, the funny David appeared in Jenny's life frequently. Before Jenny's band performance, David would quietly leave her an expensive bouquet of flowers. Jenny would greet David when she saw him on her way from school. David warmly invited Jenny to have dinner with him. But Jenny was hesitant because her father was always very conservative. He couldn't easily allow Jenny to go to activities other than studying. But David said it would bring a friend with him and would ask Jenny's parents for permission. The amazing thing is that when David came to Jenny's house, he made her mother smile with just a few words. Even her father, who had always been a stickler, was relieved of his doubts and agreed to go out with Jenny. Then the two of them went to the concert hall. Jenny finally met David's friend. Jenny was envious of Helen's magnificent appearance. She couldn't help but touch Helen's luxurious dress. They finished the concert. David took her to a fancy restaurant for dinner. During the meal, he heard that Jenny liked oil paintings, so David invited Jenny to an auction of authentic oil paintings. Jenny followed David on his trip and saw a fancy concert, upscale restaurants, extravagant life. All of these things made Jenny dizzy. Jenny immediately decided to skip school and go to the auction. It was the girl's first time to attend an auction. The man behind her signaled that it was your turn. He didn't even wait for the girl to react before he raised her hand. The novelty of the experience was very exciting for Jenny. The man behind her kept encouraging Jenny to raise her bid. In the end, Jenny won her favorite painting with a high bid. David gave Jenny an experience she had never had before. This made Jenny forget about her studies. Her grades went down the train and her father was furious. He thought that studying hard was the only way Jenny could get ahead. Her father was never stingy with Jenny's education. He spent a lot of money to give Jenny the best education. But all he got was Jenny's grades near the passing mark. Just when the atmosphere in the house was depressing, there was a sudden burst of laughter. It was David who came to her house. He was laughing with her parents in the living room. David lied that he was an Oxford graduate and that he was going back to school for the weekend to visit his professor. Jenny knew that David was lying, but she wanted so badly to escape the oppressive family atmosphere. So, she took advantage of her father's hesitation to cooperate with David. It only took the two of them three or two round trips to get her father to agree to David taking Jenny out. Jenny became more refined and beautiful after Helen's makeover. David's eyes were smiling when he looked at her. It was the first time they had spent the night together outside. Jenny wanted to wait until she was 17 years old to have further and deeper communication with David. David expressed his respect and understanding for her. He still had plenty of time to wait for her to grow up. David's courteousness had Jenny completely smitten. But on their way back, David takes the painting from the castle on the side of the road. Jenny can't believe that the man she's in love with is a man who steals for a living. David sincerely explains his profession and life to her. Jenny is gradually convinced by him. She loves his honesty even more at this point. On Jenny's birthday, David brought all kinds of gifts and offered to take Jenny to France. Her father was very serious and refused his invitation. 
but the two of them finally convince her father with David's rhetoric and promises of Jenny. David took Jenny on a tour of Paris. The beauty and the gentleman David made the young girl give her body to him. Her education dreams were completely left behind. David looks at the beautiful and agile Jenny and asks her if she will marry him. Jenny was so surprised and happy that her eyes were red with emotion. Her father was unexpectedly happy to learn this news. He thought that Jenny's purpose of studying was to marry a good man. The next day, Jenny asked the principal to suspend her studies. The principal repeatedly urged Jenny to reconsider. Jenny could only see the happiness in the present. She complained that studying was difficult and boring. She could either do those boring and difficult things for the rest of her life, or she could marry now and go to Paris and Rome and listen to jazz and eat fine food and have fun. Jenny slams the door and gives up the idea of Oxford altogether. She now has to do everything to prepare for marrying David. But a letter in David's car completely disproves her fantasy. A 17-year-old teenager girl falls in love with a suave, middle-aged man. She gives her body to him during their trip to Paris. She loses herself to the absurdity of love and the glamour of life. The young girl even gave up her dream of studying at Oxford in order to marry the middle-aged man. But then life gives her a big surprise. Jenny finds a letter in David's car. The envelope was addressed to Mr. and Mrs. David. It turned out that David had been lying to Jenny all along. He promised Jenny that he would divorce his wife. Jenny doesn't know how to face her parents' expectations. She told David to go and tell her parents. Instead, she waited for the car to drive away. Jenny was upset and wanted to find out what was going on. She went to David's house and saw David's wife walking out the door with the baby. Jenny didn't realize that David had a child. She tried to leave but was stopped by David's wife. She asked Jenny if she was pregnant. Because this has happened before, Jenny instantly felt very stupid. What with his charm and modesty and manners? He was actually a complete fraud. She returned home devastated. Her parents' concern made her even more irritated. She angrily blamed her parents for not stopping her. Jenny locks herself in her room. Her father stood outside the room and whispered words to Jenny to comfort her. Jenny came to her senses. There are no shortcuts in life. She decided to go to the principal and prepare for Oxford again. But she was rejected. The headmaster thought she had to pay the price for making the choice of her own free will. Jenny didn't want to give up. So she found the teacher who thought the most of her before. When she entered her teacher's house, she saw the books and paintings on the table. All these things were bought by the teacher with her own money. Jenny finally knew the meaning of hard work. The teacher was happy to help her. Jenny is motivated on the bus, at the desk, at the dinner table. Jenny is always revising her homework. The test of her hard work is finally upon her. Jenny has finally managed to get into Oxford with her own efforts. She will finally be able to live the glamorous life with her own efforts. She'll keep pushing forward and getting closer to the good things. The film is based on the memoirs of British journalist Lynn Barber. Jenny is the uncertainty and rebellion of an adolescent girl. She finds the repetition of schoolwork boring and uninteresting, and she desperately wants to grow up. She wants to be part of a world full of temptations, but loses herself in the pomp and circumstance, and she falls down painfully. The good thing is that she learns from her mistakes, and realizes that only through her own efforts can she enjoy life in a proper manner. There is never a shortcut in life. The only thing that is more solid and long-lasting is to rely on oneself.